Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Seth and welcome back to another video, folks. I'm once again doing one of these videos and of course, as always, we'll be looking at the situation of crypto as far as the current situation goes. And uh, before I do get into this, I just wanted to point out if you see anything like this in the video's messages uh, where people are talking about this wonderful, amazing trader and uh, being advised to go and chat with them on whatever group it is whether it is a telegram because that's the newest thing i've seen or whether it is a whatsapp group just bear in mind that this is most likely a scam and if you give your money to these people you will most likely lose it and never see it so keep that in mind also before i do want to get into the video i just want to point out that i am not a financial advisor nor am i giving any financial advice to anybody this is just what i'm doing and how i see things and what i'm going to be looking at in the near future as as well as in the um far future let's call it that so first things first let's go over here this is the current situation as far as the market goes so let's refresh that we are down 1.66 percent with the cryptocurrencies now one thing that i have noticed here is xrp is doing really good of course as i said i have a buy in uh, trade order and i'm hoping we get to that price we'll keep an eye on that and of course we well this is one right here that has actually surprised me with how well it's done this is terra luna yeah so let's look at this right here because this is quite interesting and i am definitely well i'm interested let's put it this way so this is the let's see the all-time chart now imagine if you bought down here jesus christ you would have made a fortune but i think there's still a good option for it. i think that we may see a nice couple hundred dollars per token i don't know maybe uh but here's where we are right now so i'm looking for when the federal reserve meeting happened in february i believe so i think it was somewhere around here and so it did drop so I'm hoping it drops back down a bit so we can pick up quite a bit. So that is my plan. I think I am probably going to look more towards Terra Luna than Solana or Solano, Solana, yeah, um, with this next run. I did pick up some Solana, of course, and I bought it at $80 a pop. And of course, I sold it at over $100. So that was still a nice profit that I made. Now, if I look at Solana right here, all right, so same thing, same dates. And let's find it somewhere around here. As you can see, the performance on Solana wasn't all that great, and it's still dipping. And I think it's going to dip even more, especially with the Federal Reserve meeting that will be happening, well, I'd say in about a week's time. I think for the next week, we're going to see everything just slowly start to dip more and more and more. As we get close to them to date, things are going to dip even harder. And of course, um, on the 16th, and this is just a guess, we're going to see the hardest dip. And that is where I plan to buy in. What I'm buying this round, as far as I'm concerned, I might pick up some Ethereum. I'm interested in that. Bitcoin, not really interested in that. XRP, definitely want to get my hands on that. I think XRP will be the next Terra Luna once the lawsuit is finished with this so we can see this going up definitely worth picking it up whilst we have a chance uh, of course want to pick up some terra luna this is going to be more of a trade a swing trade so that's one of them things definitely want to load up on shiba inu and i'm going to load up heavily on shiba inu and uh the next one i might pick up a bit just a bit of course is some decentraland mana i've been looking at what's been going on with the charts uh, of course nothing all that important also the other thing i wanted to point out in this time around we are on coin gecko and of course this is shiba doge i do think shiba doge still has a future especially since it has been audited which is nice to know and uh, i'm kind of hoping this price does continue to dip because i want to kind of pick up some more now i did say in my previous video off their website that if you do hold shiba doge with each transaction five percent gets spread amongst those that are holding so my holding on 
Shiba Doge has actually grown quite a bit. Now, why has that happened? Why is it a thing? Let's uh, find it. I think it's here, right? So this is what it's currently. Let's refresh this just in case things haven't changed. So nothing's changed here. But if we look at holders, there aren't really all that many holders. So obviously, 5% split amongst all of these accounts right here. And I think it is dependent on how much you're holding. I'm not sure how it, how it actually divides, but I'm st I still got quite a decent amount. So definitely a bit of um, <laughs> a bit of coinage coming into my wallet. Of course, I have it on the MetaMask wallet, and so this is what's been going on with Shiba Doge. I think it's still early. I mean, this is what three months old now. Mm. Yeah, I'd say three, let's, not even three months, maybe two and a half, let's call it that, because don't forget, it did launch on the 25th of December. There's definitely plenty of room for this coin to grow. How far it will grow, I don't know. But if you look at the market cap, still not a bad market cap. It is $62 million, so it has lots of room to grow, and I hope it does grow nicely. Uh, probably we're going to see growth towards the end of the year, and I think one of the big things that we need to keep in mind is of course the uh, exchanges it's only listed on three exchanges as we see more of these the value of the coin will grow of course this for me we'll see we'll see what this adds but i think it has a lot of potential uh, going back to cryptocurrencies with potential if you don't like the risky stuff you can always go with the more secure stuff and i do think terra luna has a good potential as well as xrp and most definitely shiba inu now shiba inu has gone down now let's look at shiba inu because i do hold a lot of shiba inu i do like it i like where it's going i like what it's aiming for and so before i get onto the next tab i just want to point out that there's a good reason i did do the screenshots that i showed you before and uh, I kind of figured that this would happen. So basically, my charts and drawings on the Shiba Inu trading chart kind of got messed up, deleted, so to speak. So I had to try and remake it uh, as close as possible. So this is loading. There we go. This is the situation that we're in. So since it rise in October, where I saw that massive pump, until present day, we are now actually in a descending triangle. Now, I'm going with this because right here I can see point of resistance. And of course, so to me, this looks like if you see this line right here, even if we straighten out this line, it's still a descending triangle. So this is how we've been trading within the triangle itself. If we zoom in. Okay, so this is a four hourly chart, by the way. So you can see the whole picture. If we go on the daily chart, which is this one right here, zoom in, this is more accurate. So I built this on the daily chart and I kind of counted it from here. This is the whole picture I'm looking at right here. This is when it went real big. So again, we can see that this was a line of resistance and then it became a line of support and has continued to be a line of support, as you can see. So that's basically why it's slightly at an angle. However, it is still a descending triangle. Of course, these are the main lines of resistance right now. This is what we're struggling to get past, and I don't think we're going to get past it until at least, of course, March. Now, what I've done here, right, because I'm about to redraw these. So I kind of drew a rough line as to how I expected it to trade. Of course, we did come up here. We went past the line of resistance, but then fell back underneath it within a couple of days. And I think that's basically what's going to happen. We're not going to stay up above it until at least after the Federal Reserve meeting. And so what I did here, this is a drawing off based off of this right here. What happened right here with the last Federal Reserve meeting, which took place on the 21st. So this is basically the action we saw, right? It dipped quite low. The lowest it sold at, although it was for a very brief second, was somewhere around 17, possibly 16. But that was a very small window of opportunity. Um, Trading-wise, I think we're going to trade within... Whoops. I hate it when it does that. Uh, let's kind of go like that. That's just a rough estimate. Anyways... 
Okay, so let's have a look at what's happened here. I did zoom in so you guys can see what's going on. So, as I said, this was just me trying to kind of roughly reproduce what was going on. This is the line that I expected to trade in. We're kind of close to that. We didn't go too far low, too far above. We did break past the resistance over here. However, this line, and I'll show you this in a bit, this is actually a copy of this. So basically how I expect it to trade on those dates. Now, of course, this was the Federal Reserve meeting or building up to the Federal Reserve meeting uh, on the 21st of January. So I expect this to do something similar this round, probably a bit worse because, of course, in this meeting or as a result of this meeting, we will find out what the rate hikes are. And uh, I think this will cause a good amount of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, enough to push it further down. Now, I'm trying to put this back here. So this is what I expect to see. We're going to have maybe a dip. I'd say this is a range I expect it to fall between. So between 17, so quad zero 17 to maybe 10, quad zero 10, potentially even lower. But if it does go even lower, it's going to be one of those like really flash crashes, maybe a couple of minutes before it goes back up. This line right here that I drew is based off of this right there. There we go. All right. So this is how I expect it to trade after those dates. All right. So as confidence comes back into the market, we're basically going to go back up, have a nice fall and trade sideways for a couple of days, maybe around the 15 to 17 range so something like this and then we're going to start going back up as confidence starts building up so that is my prediction for shiba inu of course if we do look at uh, my pictures so this was my previous diagram similar to this this was actually quite early on and this is when i started drawing out the line and more or less as you can see we kind of followed it right i'll try and find some other pictures right here so this was the very first one before we even started falling as you can see i kind of predicted a path i'm still sticking to my guns i still think that's what's going to happen and i keep pressing on that <laughs> whoops technical difficulties i am a bit tired in all fairness and i know that's a bad excuse but it is the honest truth so this is what's been happening of course this initial drawing got lost somewhere in the internet so i had to make a new one up i'm still sticking to the exact same original idea so what's this and this is i think when i noticed that we are actually in a descending triangle pattern now of course again i keep doing that don't i so yeah basically we are trading within those pra parameters and stuff but this is what i was doing so what i did here it's similar to what i showed you before where i kind of traced some of these patterns obviously just to kind of keep it diverse whereas this time around i just drew a straight line i couldn't be bothered with it all right so let's go on to yeah this is the one day let's go on to the one hour chart this is how it looks so over here we did break past the resistance but we are basically still i mean we fell back down and we're still trading underneath it we might test it a couple of times we might fall a bit lower uh we're not gonna go above it at least until we get past that um, let's call it difficult time so i did draw this because i probably would not be surprised if we see i'd say as we trade uh a little dip then a uh, trip back up and then we just trade and trade and trade and uh, i'm expecting towards the i'd say 10th to maybe 14th of march to kind of be trading around this area right here so after here we'll see a dip again it's going to be interesting to see how low we go but i expect that we will trade between here and here so i've set my buy-ins quite low we'll see what happens i'm going to be watching these with very very interesting very very intently i think that this type of movement that we see right here potentially this this is what we will see with each federal reserve meeting now the possibility is instead of being in a downtrend which is what we are right now we might see it in an uptrend because of course after this 
the the vast majority of the fear will have gone and even with future federal reserve meetings it won't be as bad as this this is the one that's going to announce what the federal reserve will do in terms of rate hikes so because it's the first time it's doing this this is where i expect the biggest shock and then going upwards we'll still see dips with each federal reserve meeting because of course that's uncertainty a certainty and the especially in the markets does cause a sell-off so i think that is the best place to pick up anything if you're looking at stocks if you're looking at cryptocurrency and that's how i am going to be trading this year or at least investing this year trading wise we'll see what happens but that is pretty much it that is my opinion i might be completely wrong but so far so good you know i've not been too far off we'll see what happens um, we'll see in the next video how we're dealing and of course definitely looking forward to this day i am quite curious to see if my prediction is right i hope you have enjoyed it and found it useful and informative if you have please do not forget to support me in the channel by hitting that like button subscribe share and of course for those interested you can always find me on the Sethtopia discord until next time stay safe folks